What's going on guys, it's Caleb, and today we are going to continue our arrays and objects in JavaScript. And right now we're going to get a little introduction to objects. So far we've seen information stored in variables and procedures stored in functions. But what if we want to combine these two things? We get objects, which are hands down the singularly most powerful um, data types in JavaScript. And they're very useful and handy because you can create things, so, or no, you'll see in a second, they're called keys, and you can create these, and they can be anything you want, you can assign anything you want, and it just makes it super powerful, because you can you can create a, upon your imagination, and your imagination is Im uh, limitless, so, or endless, in other words, not limitless, it's endless, so, uh, let's go back to the analogy of computer languages being like regular spoken languages. In English, you have your nouns, which can you can think of as things. And then you have the verbs, which you can think of as actions. Until now, our nouns, which is our data such as numbers, strings, or variables, and our verbs, which are known as our functions, have been separate. And you've seen that in the previous video exercises that we've walked through together. But no longer. Using objects, we can put our information and the functions that use the information in the same place. Huh, that's pretty cool. You can also think of objects as combinations of key value pairs, like arrays. Only their keys don't have to be numbers like 0, 1, or 2. They can be strings and variables. So the instructions are, we put an example of how objects can be used in the editor. Click run to see the objects in a uh, action. Blech. So if we go ahead and look over here, you can, you're can you not going to know this right off the bat. You may think this is kind of like an array, but this is declaring an object in literal uh, liberal notation. And we'll see that later on in the next, um, I think it's number two, it might be number three. And we'll see how we have the difference between liberal notation and construction notation. Here we're assigning a key. And we're going to learn more about the dot notation, which is using the dot instead of the bracket. And um, we're saying phonebook.entry, which is our object. We're creating a key name called name, and we're assigning it a string value of Oxnard Motalvo. Now, we're creating another object entry called number. So to do this, phonebook.number, or phonebookentry.number, my mistake equals and it's assigning it a string of five 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 and you get it so it's just a, um, a ten digit number here we're creating a um, a function off of the um, off of our object and what we're doing here is we're console.logging and what we're printing out is saying calling and now we're saying this and I'm pretty sure we covered this in a previous tutorial but this is just a reference and pretty much this is referencing the phone book entry object. As you can see, it's saying this dot name. So whatever has um, the dot name key. So for example, the phone book entry has the dot name key. And um, you'll see this used whenever you have a lot of objects that have the same key. And you'll see that in future exercises whenever we um, loop through things or objects. And we're going to be using the this um, w the this keyword very uh, very often, and you'll see that in future videos. But pretty much what this is saying, it's saying calling this dot name, which is the phone entry phone book entry dot name, which is Oxnard Motavo. So it's pretty much saying calling Oxnard Motavo at then this dot number is referencing the phone book entry dot number, which is five 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 and all the rest of those little fives. So it's calling Mo Oxnard Motavo at 555 plus the dot dot dot. Now what we're doing, we're calling our function, our phone function through our phone book entry object. So if we go ahead and run this in our console, you'll see that we have our calling Oxnard Motavo at 555, 555, 555, dot dot dot. So hopefully you kind of grasp the um, introduction to arrays, uh, but don't worry, <laughs> it 
that was just the very first exercise. I know I covered a lot right there, but um, here we're going to take it step by step and uh, really walk through the syntax and the different um, connotations of how to um, create things and objects. So, did you see that? The phone book entry object handled data, a name, and a telephone number, as well as a procedure, the function that printed who it was calling. In the example, we gave the key, which is name, the value of Oxnard Motavo, and the key number, the value of 555, and then all the rest of those little fives. An object is like an array in this way, except it keeps keys, can be variables, or I read that wrong, except its keys can be variables and strings, not just numbers. So objects are just collections of information, essentially, keys and values, between curly braces like this. And here we have var my object equals open curly brace, and then a key, and then the value of that key, and then a comma, then a key, and the value of that key, then another comma, and then finally our last key, and then our final value, and now we're closing off our object with the end of a curly brace and a semicolon. So the instructions are, using the above syntax as a guide, create an object, me, in the editor. It should have a name, key with the value of your name as a string and an age key with the value of your age as a number so if we were to go ahead and do this what we're going to just say is var me because that's going to be our object's name then equals an open parentheses and let's go ahead and add our semicolon at the bottom now our first key is going to we're going to say name and remember your keys can be whatever you want now Following your key name, in our case it's going to be name, um, you're going to want to put a semicolon, not a semicolon, but a colon. Now you're going to put the value of name, and I'm going to go ahead and type in my name as a string value. Then you're going to put a comma, because you have another key to declare. And right now it's saying it's an extra comma because we haven't put our final key. Now we're going to say our age. Once again, put a colon, and then put your age. Now we're going ahead and save the code and submit. We're going to get the green light. Hopefully everyone got the green light. So great work. You just created your very first object. There are two ways to create an object. Using object literal notation, which is what we just did, and using object constructor. Literal notation is just creating an object with curly braces like this. Var my object or your object name equals open curly brace all your keys and then all the values and then we're closing out my object object constructor looks like this though or not not like that it looks like var object equals new object now this tells javascript i want you to make me a new thing and that's the key word there because whenever we say var my object equals new object. We're telling JavaScript to create us a new object. And I want that thing to be an object. So essentially, make sure to have the capital O there so you don't get a syntax error later on. But we're just telling JavaScript to create a new object for us. And that's what it will do. And remember, the new is a new keyword. And that will, um, you'll see that a lot whenever you want to create objects. But not only objects, you can use the new keyword for many other things, but mainly objects. You can add keys to your object after you created them in two ways. Now this is using the um, bracket notation right here. We're, do we're saying my object, and then we're giving a bracket, and then we're giving the little quotations, and then whatever our key name in which we please, in this case we're going to say name, and then we're assigning it with the equal sign to the value of Charlie, which is a string. Now the dot notation is um, prefer preferably um, a lot simpler and easier. And as you can see, we're just putting a dot here between my object dot name. The name is going to be the new key that we are making. 
and we're saying my object dot name equals Charlie, which Charlie is once again a string. So both ways are correct, and you can use either way you um which is more useful for you, but just remember that you have the box notation and you have the dot notation. So see how this is sort of similar to arrays. Recreate your me object in the editor, but this time use the object constructor. Once you make it, use either the box notation or the dot notation to give it a name property with a string value your name and an age property with your number value your age. So to use the constructor connotation or um you to use the um object constructor to create I don't mean to go back. To create a new object, we're going to say var me, because that's going to be our object's name, equals new object. And make sure that I have parentheses and not curly braces. Now, if we go ahead and see this, it's going to give us a little warning because it's preferring us to use object literal notation, but it want for us to pass this exercise, we are going to um, use the constructor notation. So just ignore this little little triangle thing right there for the moment. Now what we're going to say is me dot name. Now remember, you can also do the um, box notation, and I'll show you the guys that, that in a second. You can say me dot name equals, and then your name, which is going to be a string. And then you can also say me dot age, and then the value of your age. Now that's how to do it with dot notation. If you wanted to do this with um, box notation, you'd be me, and then you'd do the little box. That's curly braces. That's curly braces again. You'd be then your name or your key. So it would be me box and then name. Then it would equal out to let me put a space. Then it would put your name like this, and then you would add your semicolon. And let's see, name is better written in dot notation. So as you can see, they prefer us to write it in dot notation, but this is just showing you how to do um, box notation. And it would be the same exact thing for the um, age, because what you would do, you just say age, and then you'd equal to your age like so. But I'm just going to go ahead and just delete this and submit this. And we get the green light. So we got it correct. So let's go on to our next lesson. So great work. Let's make a few more objects just for practice. Create three objects called object1, object2, and object3 in the editor. Use either literal notation or the object constructor and give your object any properties you like. So um, I'm going to use the literal notation and um, I'm going to say um, var object1 and then equals and then curly brace and I'm gonna go ahead and say and create a first Cree called greeting and I'm gonna set this greeting to um, hi and I'm gonna put an exclamation mark there and put a semicolon now I'm gonna say var object 2 and then I'm gonna say greeting in this one as well and the greeting I'm going to set for this is hello. And add our semicolon and then var object three. And what I'm going to say and for this one, the key is going to be once again greeting. And I'm going to say welcome. And add our semicolon. So here we're using the literal notation to create our objects. So if we were to go ahead and save and submit our code, we would get the green light. And also you can use um, either way you want to, uh, there's multiple ways to create your um, objects and add things to them. So you may not follow the same way as I do. You can use the box notation or the dot notation or the constructor way to create your um, objects. But I just like using this way and using the dot notation, which we didn't do in the pre, um, previous exercise, but um, to add new keys 
to our objects, I would use dot notation just because it's a lot faster and simpler and doesn't look as complex in the end result. So I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next lesson. And here we have a review. So awesome, we've thrown a lot at you, but now you know what objects are, the object syntax, and how to create your own objects. Ready to put your new knowledge to work? Click run to design your own objects in the next section. So guys, if this really helped you guys out with a basic introduction to objects, don't forget to leave a like rating. If you get stuck and need any help, drop a comment down below. And if you guys really love my videos, be a supporter and a fan, and go ahead and subscribe now while you can, because it just helps me out. <laughs> and it helps you out because we're both learning. So um, thank you guys a lot for watching what yet another video. And have a wonderful day, guys. Until next time, it's been Caleb, and peace out.